with teams, they are loaded. Look at your keys to victory here for Lisa Bluter's team and Jeff Finney's squad after the opening tip. One in control by Kansas State and the whole Whites, Iowa in the black. What do you see for these two teams here? When we talk about the Hawkeyes, it's get out and go. Their transition game is one of the best in the nation. You've got to push tempo, quick hits, everybody runs the floor. And the advantage is the post game. Inside, they've got to pound it to Sonano. You've got to get isolation for those wings. And you've got to go at Kansas State in the paint. Now, if you're the Wildcats, this is the G team. This is the Time Twins. They've got to be defensive stoppers tonight. You've got to be aggressive and use that length. And the hot shots. This team's got to find some offense. They've got to be efficient, Brian. High percentage shots, and you just got to step them up and knock them down. Now, if Kingston's going to win, they're definitely going to have to score. This Iowa team comes in averaging 98 points a game. Dollinger top the circle, a triple that misses. And the Hawkeyes come the other way. Here's their starting five, led by Caitlin Clark, who's coming down the court right now. Flips it up and missed the shot, and King State the lead on. Clark is the headliner, but perhaps not well, as well known. Monica Sonano, at least out circles outside of the Big Ten. Sonano has been a phenomenal post player, one that is going to be all over the national all-American lists at the end of the season as well. The thing about Sonano is that she is just incredibly efficient. She led the nation in field goal percentage a year ago. She's coming off at 36 points and 11 boards versus Drake in their win over the weekend. She makes things happen in the post. Offensive rebound by Martin, but King State adjusts the shot and a good early start for King State defensively. A little bit of a different look for Jeff Minnie tonight with Rebecca Dollinger getting the start and Taylor Waterbach, the 6'7 junior. Trying to use some size because that is where they do have the advantage. Because this is a huge Iowa squad. They're just incredibly efficient and play well together as a unit. K-State's got to see a little bit more length, a little bit more size, and some three-point threats outside. Nice give and go. Martin is able to drive and score. First basket of the game. And that's what you're going to see from this Hawkeye offense. It is all based on tempo. It's based on cuts, it's on reads, and timing. A lot like what you see from Oklahoma, but this is an incredibly veteran group. They know how to run this offense incredibly efficiently. Let's try to decipher the defense of Iowa. Gregory tied up as she ran to the right side of the paint. And the arrow to the Hawkeyes. And that's the Kenna Warnock right in a great help side position. You cannot allow this team to turn the corner, and that's what I was not going to allow you to do. They're going to pack that lane and force this Kansas State team to have to beat them from the perimeter. But the biggest piece for Iowa, a lot of people sometimes question their defensive effort. They can score a ton of points, but they've allowed other teams to do that as well. But right now you can see they are locking down penetration lanes, forcing to beat them from the perimeter. The matchup for Shamatsu working against Sonano, but Sonano again hits a driving Martin, and Martin's got the four. And that's that cut in the read and understanding the offense. Sundell all the way to the basket. That last break in action, Jet Finney was telling Sundell that she needed to take Marshall to the hoop. She does. And that's what you've got to see. There's going to be isolation opportunities for both of these teams. Marshall that time can't get it to go, but this is where the Wildcats have to be able to capitalize on miscues from the Hawkeyes. Jalen Glenn has had a hot start this season. Drive as it knocked away from behind. Poked away. The other way we go. That was Warnock again who got her hand in there to knock it away. Driving right down the paint. Sonano wide open. And that's one of the things that Sonano does so well. We just mentioned it as the transition game. All five players run the floor. They're looking for the Sundell the other way. Driving again away at Marshall. Up and down we go, the tempo picking up, Clark in rhythm, misses the shot, Clark early on has missed the first three, she took 28 shots in the game on gets Drake, lead of nine. And not letting Gregory have any room to shoot, just trying to post up. Well you can tell that is the emphasis here defensively for Iowa, they want to force the ball out of Gregory's hands. And he scored for the Wildcats, second in the Big 12 in scoring coming in, 22 points a game. Damon Glenn, as you mentioned, part of the G force for K-State to keep Glenn Twins guarding Clark. Fade away the baseline, she's on the board. And she can keep her dribble alive, allows the offense to come to her. One of the things, maybe as a freshman, a little bit last year as a sophomore, she could force a lot. But Caitlin Clark will just slice and dice you. She will make you pay for mistakes. Jamatsu missed her first try, makes her second. <laughs> Step back three with the opportunity to shoot the ball, extends the defense, and Shimazi can do that. She was just one of seven from three at versus Wisconsin over the weekend. Shimazi 
Trying to get around inside on Sedano. Clark will reset, settle it down. High screen for Clark. Goes up. Tied up by Shinatsu, but she got her with the body for a foul. The two free throws coming for Iowa. And this is where Caitlin Clark is so effective, is she just keeps that dribble alive, turns the corner on that high ball screen. She's going to draw a lot of attention. Sundell gets caught on the screen. Now you're left one-on-one. -on -one. And shimazi has got to be able to get through that. But if you're going to go for that tie, if you've got to stay vertical, that verticality piece that the officials are looking for, if you get her with the body, that's where the whistle's going to come. Many of the things they bench didn't like it, but Clark, as I said before, not just the three-point shooter before the game with somebody they were trying to ask for a comparison. Of course, the, the natural one is Sabrina Ionescu from Oregon a couple of years ago, but Clark in her own life, probably a better shooter than Ionescu was. I think she reminds me, and this is going to go way back, but for those of you that know women's basketball, Kelly Mazanti, she played at Penn State, yeah, actually played nice. in this building in the preseason WNIT many years ago, but she was one of the best shooters and scorers in the nation, and she had range. That's what Caitlin Clark has, but she's also got the ability to facilitate. That's what makes her so effective. 12 assists in a game already this year for Clark, who has not scored less than 20 in a game this year. The 12 assists that she had in a game against Evansville, the high water mark of the Big Ten. Steal forced by Kate State, running the other way. Shanahan trying to lead the lead play, but it's out of bounds. And Kate State will go to the bench again, bringing that to the other You like that aggressive nature, but that's you what like you it. can't do, though, is you're going to get a turnover on the other end. You've got to capitalize on those mistakes. But you like the idea. 100%. I like the fact that they're getting out in the transition, see if you can't get a bucket, force Iowa to have to run with you going both directions. But if you're Jeff Mitty and this Wildcat coaching staff, you have got to value those turnovers you generate, and you've got to be able to get possessions on the other end. Sonado going against Shimatsi, and that's number two on Shimatsi. That'll send us to a timeout. Sonado at the free throw line when we return. I think so now. 1,500 career points, and she is the first player in men's or women's to reach that feat in the last 20 seasons. Uh, thank you, Jasmine. Getting there quicker than anybody else. Another addition to the Clark Trophy case, and as Missy said earlier, she is certainly up for all of the awards, but most importantly up for the Wooden, the Nick Smith, the National Player of the Year award. We'll see if her, you would think, Aaliyah Boston, that will be the two favorites for that award. Greer, the reverse layup, could not finish. K-State down only three or four now. Despite five first half turn or first quarter turnovers. And another foul committed as Sanano drives to the baseline and she'll head back to the free throw line for two. We said it at the get go. This offense by Iowa, it's built on reads, tempo, cuts. You've got to be able to find the open player. That's what Caitlin Clark does so very well out front. But the biggest piece of this now is for Kansas State, you can't overhelp. If you're going to commit, you've got to know they're going to go back door. They like to spread you out. You've got to be in help side defense. There has been some things that have been exposed here early now. This Kansas State defense is going to have to make some adjustments. Well, let me ask you this. Because Iowa, just like K-State, averages about nine threes a game, you obviously want to pay mind to those three-point shooters. How do you defend that without giving up the drive to the basket? You're going to have to rotate more, and you can't get beat one-on-one. -on -one. Now this really just comes down to a mano e mano You've got to be able to stop your player, not allow them to cut behind behind or cut in front. And that's going to be the biggest thing. I also would like to see more ball pressure out on the ball handlers. They they don't necessarily want Clark to go around them, but you've got to be able to put a little pressure out up front. Use that length, use that athleticism, and force this Iowa team to have to speed themselves up in the half court. Molly Davis has come in to take over the point guard duties for Iowa. Also in off the bench, Addison O'Grady, 6'4", sophomore. Clark remains in. She has the ball. Hawkeyes 4 of 10 for the field, K-State 3 of 8, here's Clark in some trouble. And a foul against O'Grady, no, they're going to say instead a turnover. O'Grady with some limited minutes, but she played in every game a year ago as a freshman, giving them some backup post minutes for Sonano, but another big body inside. And a defensive stop and a great defensive play that time by Molly Davis in off the bench. Exactly what Iowa wants. So on the other end, Lisa Buter was quite upset. Heavenly Greer, as we saw in the highlight, looked like she had hooked O'Grady, but the call was missed. But it works out, as you mentioned. Greer called for moving screen. And the offensive foul. 
O'Grady to Clark. Gets effort to fly by. Steps around. Misses the three. And Lauterbach up high to get the rebound. Dell has the height advantage on Davis. Gregory yet to really get open for a shot, and that's by design by Iowa. Here's Lauterbach, tough. And a foul underneath. Gregory sells the contact and a push from behind by Sidney Afalter, the sophomore from Chicago. Yeah, we've seen both Afalter and with Kate Martin drawing the assignment of Gabby Gregory. And yeah, she's looking to get inside position there to get herself a rebound, but you said it, Brian. This Iowa defense, they are locked in to be able to shut Gregory down, limit her touches, and force the rest of this Kansas State offense to have to beat them. So far, it's been Sundell that's done most of the scoring for K-State. Got a partially tipped ball that goes out of bounds. Looked to me like that ball was tipped. It was a really good contest that time by Molly Davis, but ball's gonna go to Iowa, and Davis coming in off the bench. She's averaged about 26 minutes a game so far. She's a transfer from Central Michigan, and Lisa Bluter just sings her praises because it gives them another element that they didn't have last year, and a backup point guard, and somebody who's also got a scorer's mentality when they need it. Davis, 81 games at Central Michigan, where she was a two-time All-Mac player. Back cut, Ebert. Goes up strong against so great, it could not hit the shot. A 6-0 run by the Hawkeyes, have them up by seven. You have a 6-0 run and Kansas State now just one of their last seven. So the struggles for the Wildcats, they've been able to get a couple stops here, but you've got to capitalize on those miscues and the long rebounds. Well, we said at the outset that K-State as one of the better defensive teams in the league the last couple of years under Jeff Mitty. That was not the concern. The concern was, could you score enough to stay with the likes of an Iowa, who averages close to 100 points a game? Clark doubled. Somehow threads the needle to find a teammate, and a miss shot by a falter. But a better defensive possession that time by the Wildcats, able to keep Clark contained and help, and you make them pay on the other end. Transition three by Ebert. That's the lift the Wildcats need. Ebert just working her way back from what has been an injury that has played through throughout the preseason. Glenn too tight gets called for a foul. That's going to be her second personal. So now Shamatsi and Briley Glenn both would too, and that being the fifth foul sends Iowa to the line as we get another look at Ebert's transition three. And I like that look by Ebert, just able to get her feet set, and you get caught, catch the defense back on their heels. Iowa retreats a little bit too deep. You leave that three-point line open, and you've got to knock down those open shots. But this is what Kansas State can have happen, Brian, is this foul trouble can't plague them, and it's got to be with their guards being able to play defense without fouling be active active hands active feet but you've got to do it without reaching especially 40 to 50 feet away from the basket Warlock makes both Hawkeyes six of eight from the free throw line K-State has yet to shoot a free throw that's been the difference in the game and that's one thing for the Wildcats, opportunities at the line in that win at versus Wisconsin, 19 of 23. That was a big lift for their offense. You've got to find ways to get to the line that's aggressive. We haven't seen a lot of penetration yet by the Wildcats. Martin, the freshman tried to go baseline. Glenn to a cutting sun down. Six for Sundell. Strong take and finished by Warnock. One of those high level experience, great basketball IQ players for this Iowa squad. Second team all Big Ten selection a year ago. She's a starter this year, almost 25 minutes a game. But it is this older roster, and I use the term older because these are veteran players four or five year seniors that Lisa Bluter has on this squad. They know how to run this offense. They not much rattles them. They've seen a little bit of everything. And this is a unit that plays incredibly well together. You well, know, Warlock has really been not at the scoring level that I would have hoped for early in the season, but 
Averaging double figures coming in. Sudden down again, doing it herself. Drive into the basket. She's got eight for K-State. You like that aggressive mentality out of the sophomore. She's got to be more, find opportunities to score, put the ball out of her hands, allow her to move off the ball a bit. Marshall lines up a three. Iowa yet to hit a three-pointer in the ball game. That leads by five. Riley Glenn lets it go. And hits! This team is going to look to hunt threes. Jeff Mitty talked about it. He was pleased with how they found good looks and high percentage shots versus Wisconsin. Now That's a got turnover. To be the difference. Moppin intercept. She'll go all the way to the basket. Freshman scores to tie the game. And now this is where that momentum starts to pick up. This team's got to find that confidence factor, and you do that by little plays, runouts. Those are the big ones that the Cats need. Foul on Jalen Glenn. Jeff Biddy's face perhaps says it all. That's already seven fouls on K-State to one for Iowa. The steal comes just from a miscue that by Davis. She thought Sonano was going to stay high, but instead looked to cut and mop it in the right place at the right time, but is able to finish on the other end. But then it was a foul at about 93 feet away from the basket by Jalen Glenn. And Jeff Mitty's going to have to roll the dice here. Both Glenn twins with, with fouls early in this first quarter, but their length and their defensive effort is what's allowed this team to claw the way back. And now just down two with under 20 seconds to go here in this first quarter. See if K-State holds for the final word of this first. A better performance for K-State to start the game than they had against Wisconsin, where they trailed by 10. Riley Glenn off the screen. Shot is off the mark. And Iowa will dribble it out. Hawkeyes by two at the end of the first quarter, but Sundell and the Wildcats making Caitlin Clark and company a little nervous to begin the second quarter when we return on Big 12 Now. Free throw line, a 7-1 to one advantage in fouls. Six turnovers for K-State. The Wildcats, in some respects, lucky to be down only two despite turning it over so many times. Well, Riley this, Glenn left open, unable to hit. And a little bit of a different defensive look because you will see some zone from Iowa. They will mix it up a little bit. They played mostly man in that first half. They were exposed. The penetration got the best of them. But this is an Iowa team that they themselves can get off the dribble and go. And late. a late, late whistle that time. And Stolke just puts it on the floor, the freshman, and gets to the rim. And now she's got a chance at an and one. That is further going to not make Jeff happy, Jeff Mitty happy. As Maupin gets her first. And another free throw for the Hawkeyes. Stolke finishes the three-point play. And Kansas State still has not been to the free throw line. That is one of the places where they were able to get, to get themselves back in the game against Wisconsin over the weekend. But that's also going to come with being aggressive. You've got to think about getting to the rim and going at these Iowa post players. Sagging defense by the Hawkeyes. Jalen Glenn will try her hand in a long three. And the Hawkeyes do a good job of keeping Gregory, leading rebounder for the Cats, off the glass. Clark all the way coast to coast. Will not get the ball to go in. <laughs> You're not going to get a three-point play or anything off of that one, Ed, as it is going to stay. But you see the explosiveness on the break. That is what Caitlin Clark just does so well, is that her head is up. She's looking to score. She is looking to finish. If she doesn't have someone to pass to, she is going to get to the rim. And a, yet another opportunity for the Hawkeyes at the free throw line. Well, Sundell took a shot. Yes, she did. Yeah. And we've seen that time and time again from Serena Sundell. She took a shot to the face at Wisconsin, came back with a bit of a black eye, I believe, a war wound from up north. And now again, takes another one, just trying to play one-on-one -on -one defense against Caitlin Clark, which is no easy task for anybody nope. in the country. Well, now you have three Wildcats with two fouls. Shamatsi, Sundell, and Briley Glenn, as Clark makes both and has six. So now you gotta play smart. So if you're both Sundell and Briley Glenn, both in this ballgame right now, you've just gotta play smart basketball. 
They've got to be able to play defense without fouling. You've got to continue to be aggressive on the offensive end. This is a bit of a 2-3 zone look. They're going to move. They're going to see if they can't trap. I was looking for tips. Lob goes down to Lauterbach. This is a play we saw all the time from Aoka Lee and company last year. And a foul called as Lee is before Lauterbach travels. It's going to be on Stolke. Yeah, and Lock and Foss for the Kick State fans. Much different to be able to throw that lob pass and have Aoka Lee on the receiving end. But there was some contact there coming from the backside, and that's where the Wildcats get bailed out. 20 on the reset for that shot clock. Gregory double teamed. Posting up, leaning in on her man, score it, and one. And Gabby Gregory scoreless in that first quarter. She's got to find a way to get going, and I like this isolation play down low. One-on-one -on -one against Marshall. She's got a bit of a size and strength advantage. It just stays with the play. Takes it on the up and under, and now she's got a chance to finish it with the old-fashioned three-point play. So that's Gregory's first hoop, as you said. Hits the free throw. Wildcats a 76% free throw shooting team, and that ends when they've been a brief 5 0 run by Iowa. In transition, pull up three, hammered by Marshall. And that was a bit of a zone, kind of a full court, three quarter court zone look by the Wildcats. They showed that against Wisconsin, it was effective. But if you're going to get beat deep, you cannot allow them to get set for threes. Jalen Glenn could not hit. Glenn had a big game against Wisconsin with 16 points. King State 3 of 11 from behind the yard. Clark, short one in the lane. And Riley Glenn tracks down the rebound. I think she'd love to have that one back, but she also had somebody open in the corner. But those are the looks that Kansas State's got to capitalize on. A miss on one end, you've got to make them pay on the other. They do with Sundell, who's in double figures for the second straight game. 11 for the sophomore point guard. Mark just one of six from the floor. She brings it up the other way. Sonato forced to give it up. And Stolke travels with it. And a much better defensive possession that time for the Wildcats, Brian. I thought they were more active. You saw a lot of long hands, active feet, and they were in help side defense. You've got to disrupt this Iowa offense. Get them off their game. Gregory against Sonato. Again! A chance and an one. We set it at the top. This is a young lady that brings toughness and energy to the floor. I think a piece that maybe this Wildcat offense has been missing, especially from their perimeters. And Gabby Gregory just one-on-one -on -one against Monica Sonano, and she's going to draw that foul. And again, back to the free throw line for that three-point play opportunity. And a great story for Gabby. Gabby Gregory missed a lot of games last year at Oklahoma, suffered a vocal cord injury that just could not heal right, just could not get right, healthy. Was not herself, but looking very much like the Gregory we saw that was not only a unanimous all Big 12 freshman team member a number of years ago, but averaged over 16 a game as a sophomore in Norman. Suddenly the gap is only one. Marshall, who hit a three last time down, able to get to the elbow and hit. And that's patience. We see this Iowa offense, they will love to go fast, but when they need to be in the half court, they can play patient half court offense as well. Waterbach, the offensive rebound. Neither team has been efficient from behind the arc. Glenn steps inside the three point line, misses another. Jalen Glenn is 0 of 5 from the field. Fast break opportunity the other way. And a lay in finish one for of the, Warnock. One of the best transition games in the nation, and that's what Iowa does. It isn't on every possession. They pick their times. And that time it is Clark. Ball in the middle of the floor. And Warnock, she's going to streak and get an easy layup. Gregory. Finally gets an opening. Back tap. King State another chance. It's Sundell to the basket. Running layup not there. Lauterbach trying to keep it alive. Cannot. Sonato clears. And here come the Hawkeyes. Marshall in transition. Long. Rebound, though, to the Hawkeyes. Sonato unable to hit. And a foul on Iowa. Late whistle, a bit of a contact on that rebound. And as you can see, forcing Iowa into a couple quick shots. They will play fast, but not necessarily as loose a Bluters just saying right there, we got to get into our offense. And I think that's what they missed on that last possession. It was the quick three in transition, which was not a bad shot. But after that, they've got to get themselves back where that's the cut and the reads and force the Wildcats to guard you in the half court. Gregory 
Scoreless in the first quarter. Loses the ball on the baseline. Was hoping for a call. Did not get it. Clark in transition. Pulls up. England Clark just has not found the range yet for Iowa. One of seven. In transition. Sundell pulls up and won't hit. Jalen Glenn trying to get the tie up and does in the backcourt. Arrow to the Hawkeyes. Yeah, Martin got kind of left there on an island by herself, looking for Davis to come back and help, but really couldn't get it in good hands, active hands by Glenn. One of the things we mentioned at the beginning of the ball game is that this defense has got to be physical, long, use their length, use their speed, and use their athleticism to be able to disrupt this Iowa offense. Jalen Glenn came into play today, leading the Big 12 over with 14 steals in her average per game at four and a half. And a tremendous game defensively against Wisconsin with five. Hawkeyes have only hit one three out of eight. They are shooting 41%. Molly Davis left wide open. She'll bury the three. And she's got a scores mentality. She was the leading scorer at Central Michigan a year ago. As you said it, an all-Mac player, caliber, caliber player, now coming in off the bench, is bought into her role at Iowa. And when they need shots, she can knock them down. Sundell to Lauterbach. A bold movement here by K-State. Sundell a little flat on the three. Hawkeyes in transition. The lead suddenly is eight for the fourth-ranked Hawkeyes. Double-team on O'Grady. The ball finds a three-point shooter out high in Warnock, and it's tucked out to K-State. Time out on the four. Iowa on a 7-0-1 leads it here in the Little Apple by eight. changed since she played against K-State compared to now and she said it definitely has changed because Yoki is out for the season it took them and the coaches a while to get used to it because it was such a different style of play but now everyone had to adjust and everyone seems to have just pretty well well you take not just Yoki out of the game with her impact of 20 points 10 rebounds and maybe five blocks a game but the, everything on the offensive end and defensive end, Missy ran through a yoga lead. It's it's uh, everything had to change because you no longer had that funnel to go inside to. Yeah, absolutely. And I think the difference maker here for this Kansas State team is when you look at the pieces of the puzzle that Jeff Mitty and his staff had put around, have put around Ioka Lee in the past, is that it's a complement players. And so now you have to do this by committee. You've got to be able to play better team defense. It's got to be better execution on the offensive end. And I think the biggest factor, you don't have a rim protector, so you've got to be very solid one-on-one -on -one defensively. You've got to keep people out of the lane. All five people have to rebound. You don't have that 6-6 six, six presence to clean things up. And that could also be a cleanup on the offensive end. We saw that a lot over the past couple of years with Ioka Lee. This is that there could have been a tough shot or a missed pass or a bad pass, but with her good hands and her ability to rebound, she made it look simple. K-State's got to use that kind of team effort now. Spread offense, attack mentality, play fast, but play smart. Down 10 here in the early going. Iowa on the 9-0 run. Riley Glenn to the bench with three fouls. Sister Jalen replaces her. Jalen still yet to find her shooting range. Shot clock winding down. Dollinger lets it fly. Another back tap attempt by Glenn Clark in transition. Spitting shot did not get it, and a foul on K-State. And that's the explosiveness of Caitlin Clark in the open floor, is that she's going to see it, and she's going to turn the corner. She didn't want to go left. She knew the advantage was coming back the other way. And a spin move, an opportunity at the free throw line. And one of the things that this Iowa offense and this tempo and the pace and their transition game, what it does is it just puts pressure on your defense. And now Kansas State finds themselves in a bit of a pickle because they are dealing now with a lot of foul trouble issues. And that with not necessarily as much depth as Jeff Mitty would like to necessarily have, that's a big piece of the puzzle and also a huge discrepancy at the free throw line. Oh, massive, 16 of 18 on the Hawkeyes here. Gregory able to hit 
the right elbow jumper. Gregory has eight. K-State has hit two free throws, both from Gregory. That's it. It's been an aggressive play by Iowa to the rim, and they have put this K-State team in some serious foul issues. Jalen Glenn fakes the pass, shoots the three, and scores her first two. Good decision by the sophomore because Iowa was getting ready to jump that passing lane. She's able to control, get her feet set, and knock down a big three. That stops the bleeding for this Wildcat offense. Just two makes in the last ten for K-State from the floor, but a big three-pointer. And then a turnover as Davis puts the fastball too low for Warnock. Sonato back in for the Hawkeye team in the post. See the turnover numbers for each squad. K-State's done a lot better. They had six of those seven in the first first quarter. Yeah, break for Caitlin Clark as well. Marshall back in the game. You've got Warnock. This is a little bit of a bigger lineup for Iowa. But if you're Kansas State now, you've got to find the gaps and you've got to be able to see it. A little bit of a zone look, kind of man switching. They're going to sag. They don't want to give up anything anything deep. Shavatsi hits the three-pointer. A struggle for Iowa against bigger players and quote unquote four and fives that can step out and shoot the three. That is not necessarily something they've defended well. It's been an issue and Kansas State now six of 20 from behind that three point line. The Cats are in the zone. They do not zone often. Iowa looks a little bit off kilter. Shot clock winding down. Long three-pointer taken, won't go. The rebound to Gregory. Kansas State making this run with Clark getting a breather on the bench. Gregory to the post, leaning in, not scoring. It's her own rebound. Picks it up and in. Ten for Gregory in the corner. And yeah. Lisa out for Iowa. Yeah, Lisa Bruner wants a timeout. And Gabby Gregory, that is what you like to see. That toughness mentality, able to stick with the possession. She's just one-on-one -on -one and gets off our down low and just stays with it. Nobody blocks her out. And right now it is one-on-one -on -one and Gabby Gregory putting this team on her back and finding a way to keep this thing close. And I was got to talk about it. Well, we heard from Jasmine and Lena both and Gregory in the past, the story of her toughness of getting stitches in the middle of a game across the street from the gym and coming right back over to play in the same game not wanting to sit out and her toughness as you said it before it has really been a godsend I think for Jeff Biddy and his team they wanted they needed that you haven't seen it in a couple of years when you think back to some of King State's best teams here they had someone like a Shaylin Martin a Kendrick Beesman that was under Jeff Biddy years before that the Shaley Lettings the Marley Skipson that toughness that can bring that extra level to the Wildcats. And it is contagious, and that's what you want to have because you have other people that are willing then to go all out on every single possession. Warnock answers the 10-0 State run with a three-pointer. She's in double figures yeah. for the third straight. Jeff Mitty came out of that timeout, Brian. They went 1-3-1, one, one, and you've got to get to the corner. That's the job of the person in the bottom of that zone. you got to find shooters. Glenn hits her second three. You mentioned it early. Hasn't really necessarily but she's been shooting 52% from the field in the first two games. It hasn't necessarily been from behind the three-point line, but an added part of her game that brings offense for the Cats. Sonano able to pin Lauterbach deep and go to the left hand. Sonano's been quiet, six points. The state spreads the floor out. Sundell with the drive and a lean in, did not get the whistle. Now it comes very late. And Sundell bailed out with a couple of free throws as the foul goes against Marshall. And that's when you'd love to see that whistle come a little bit earlier, but that's the mentality that Serena Sundell had in the first 10 minutes of this ball game. One-on-one -on -one penetration, scores mentality, be aggressive. And as we said it, there's a big gap here of where Iowa has been at the line and where Kansas State has been at the line. But even closing out this second quarter with chances at the free throw line, this is, can be a big lift for Kansas State. Wildcats have hit five of the last six shots. They've now, as you said, getting on the line, hitting some free throws. And K-State within two points here with a minute to play in the first half. K-State goes back to their man-to-man. -man. So now you're looking at some screens and high post action here in isolations for Clark. 
hedge on the screen by Lauterbach. Clark steps back again, cannot find the range, and King State pulls down the board. Clark, one of eight from the floor. Gregory lets it go. A little bit of a heat check by Gregory, trying to give King State the lead and bring the roof down. Could not. You've got about an eight second, nine second differential shot clock to game clock here. In some respects, Missy, maybe not a bad shot by Gregory. You get two for one. Yeah, it could be. Here we go. But now, Kansas State, if you don't get, they miss, you've got to get this rebound. No question. Clark. She has worked off his high screen in Sonano. K State switches this time into Sonano. Down low on the post, she'll score. Nobody back to take the inbound play for K State. And time runs out of the first half. So miscommunication for the Wildcats without Sundell in the game. And the first half ends. Iowa by four, Kansas State hanging in there with the number four team of the country. Let's go to Jasmine Halliburton, who's with Jeff Mitty. Coach, you're hanging in there with the number four team in the country. How do you think you did in this first half? Well, foul trouble hurt us a lot. You know, we had some players out there with some fouls, and uh, you know, they're a really talented offensive team. We're gonna have to score with them, but I was proud of the way we came back. Caitlin Clark is just one of nine from the field. What do you guys need to do to make sure you keep that defensive effort against her in the second half? You know, just have a good awareness. Uh, you know, it's hard to keep her one of nine, but uh, have a good awareness of her, and uh, we've got to get to the other shooters a little better. Thank you, Coach. Thank you. All right, Jasmine, appreciate the time. We'll come back. We'll take a look at the first half numbers. And later, a look at Big 12 scores as well. All that on Big 12 now on ESPN+. Plus. Go, yeah. right? That's exactly what she's saying right there. It is interesting. I mean, we talked about the different style of play. K-State has shown press for much of the season, not doing much of that here tonight. Maybe perhaps concerned about the get up and go aspect of Iowa. Absolutely, that full court pressure that they used to disrupt Wisconsin when they played them in Milwaukee. We haven't really seen that tonight, but there haven't been a lot of opportunities for the Wildcats to get that press set. But you also cannot allow, Wisconsin, or allow Iowa to just slice and dice you and get through that press. So I think that this is a good decision by Jeff Mitty not to try to control this game in the full court, but much more in the half court. Shimatsi, who did not start, has already picked up a couple of threes. But a foul on the side on Gregory as she tried to play tight on Clark. And you can be aggressive. You just got to be able to do it without bodying somebody up. And if you're going to create enough contact that it's going to force somebody off balance or off their line, off their dribble line, that's when that whistle is going to blow. State starts the second half the way they started the game, with Sh except for Shamatsi in place of Lauterbach. Clark clears and buries the three. Yeah, big screen in the middle of the lane, and Gabby Gregory got hung up. Jeff Mitty not at all happy about it, thought it was a lot of contact, but now we see zone from Iowa. K-State's got to have that attack mentality. It's Gregory drilling the jumper. And I love that spot. That's where you've got to go against the zone, get to the middle of the floor. Great hands by Sonato, catch and score, season double figures. Fast pace, both of these teams now trying to find some tempo to start this second half. Extra pass could have hit Shimatsi with an open three. Instead it's Glenn, and way off the mark. Clark may have been held in check. She still had 12 points, seven boards, five assists in the first half. He said that she's a numbers machine as she just continues to find a way to impact games at so many different levels. And she creates so many opportunities for herself and her teammates. Shabatsi just trying to get out of the way and she's going to get called for a foul. And that's one of the things Clarks does so well is she draws contact. And she's able to finish most of the time, get herself a three-point play. She'll be at the line for two this time. But it's contact. And then you've got to get that ball up so that it creates that shooting motion. One of the best in the nation, no doubt about it. A rare miss for Clark, who had been eight of eight from the line before that. She missed both. Eight threes for King State in the first half. They've missed their first try of the second half from long distance. Dollinger, full head of steam. Back to Shabatsi. Hits another three. That's four. Her ability to step out 
from the post and create another three-point threat really elevates this Wildcat offense. It creates matchup problems right now for Iowa. Driving a kick, Warnock, the answer. Not there, the rebound batted out to K-State. They're gonna call Martin for that over the back, trying to get that loose ball on the rebound. A lot of contact coming in. And the six foot junior, averaging almost 23 minutes a game, picks up another foul, a hustle foul right there for the Hawkeyes. Dollinger lets it go for the lead. Offensive rebound, Sundell, and she is fouled on a put-back attempt. One of the few times we've seen Kansas State get a second-chance opportunity and a great way to start this second half. Much more of an aggressive mentality for the Wildcats offensively. Finding open players, making the next pass, and the sophomore not afraid to mix it up and get herself a chance at the free-throw line from the offensive glass. Sundell misses the free throw. She's 80%. Honorable mention All-Big 12 a year ago. Also the unanimous member of the All-Big 12 freshman team. Ties the game and has 14 points. All tied up here in the third quarter. Gregory with a near steal. Skips it all the way over to Marshall. Unguarded three, not there. Glenn the rebound. And K-State a chance to get their first lead. Second time we've been tied tonight. Glenn, an aggressive take. And doesn't use the backboard and misses the short jump. Yeah, a little bit too much finesse that time by the sophomore. I'm gonna keep Clark in front of her. Clark has been a free throw machine in this game. Tries to go behind the back, loses the ball to the ground, and then calls timeout. Wool taken as well. 6.38 to go third quarter. All tied at 52. And that lift has helped the Cats keep this game now tied. 52 all. 6.38 left here in the third. Good scout by K-State on the inbound. Able to knock it away from Sonano. Here's Sundell. In the lane, for the lead! Sundell was 16, a game high. Downhill for Martin, missed the shot, the rebound tap out, a break for Kent State, a rare mistake for the Hawkeyes. Yeah, one of those that you would most likely see Kate Martin make each and every time. She got loose, no one on the help side. She was wide open. Probably thought there was going to be somebody coming, but no one did. Kansas State dodges a bullet there, and they've got themselves a two-point lead here. Opportunity to take advantage of the miscue. Wildcats trying to keep this lead intact with Gregory. Back to the pedals, could not hit the jumper, and Lauterbach over the back. Yeah, a bit of a forced look by Gregory there at the, she was about 15 feet, kind of got stuck in no man's land. But those are the turnovers, or I should say fouls, that the Kansas State can't necessarily have. Now, you Lauterbach. like the aggressiveness, but right. you want, you don't want to build that base up. What this does, then it continues to put the Hawkeyes at the free throw line when you get to five. Clark in some trouble. K-State stays away from fouling and comes out of there with the ball. Lauterbach sets the screen for Sundell. Lauterbach with it on the block. Not much of a score for K-State. Gregory posting. And a foul as she gets pulled from behind. It's going to be on Martin. Second foul of the Hawkeyes and second on Martin. Some success for Kansas State in that first half, especially in the second quarter, where those isolation looks for Gabby Gregory. So you've got to go back to that well. You've got to continue to have the attack mentality by Sundell and these Kansas State guards. Put it on the floor, get to the rim. But I like the isolation for Gregory. One-on-one, -on -one, allow her just to see if she can't score or get fouled and get to the line. 
Long conversation between the officials. And they want to check on the team fouls at this point for both teams. But this will be not, it was not on the shot. It was a call on the floor. Therefore, it'll be a 20 second reset on that shot clock out of bounds underneath for K-State. It will be. I'm going to go back to a play that we saw underneath the basket where the ball was tapped out. And you said at that moment that there was an over the back foul on Iowa. It was never registered on the board at that time. And I wonder if that is the discrepancy that's being talked about right now. It that, was the one on Martin that's that she exactly had, That's exactly right, because yes. that would be the third, right now, that would be the third foul on Martin if that was an earlier foul or just a tap out. There was no foul ever recorded on the scoreboard or in the book on that play that we're talking about some time ago. But it looks as though they're coming back at it because the official... This is Brian Hall, who is not the lead official, and Julie Kromenek is. She's over. Yeah. She looked at the replay for a minute, but they were trying to... He came over and asked, I heard him say specifically, what is the team foul count for both teams? And Julie Kromenek, I believe, was the one that made that call. I saw her make that whistle on Kate Martin on that over the back. She was the far official away from us. There we go. Get an explanation. There was a missing foul on Iowa's team. Went back and number 20 black. Uh, we added a foul there and a foul to the home team. So they now have three. Visiting team is what she meant. Yes. So Lisa Bluter probably won't be happy about that. And that means now Martin with three fouls. Yeah, and I, I believe Julie was actually the official that made that call. It was on the far right. side away from us. And it was kind of one of those obscure ones because it did get tipped out, but it was a tip out on the foul call. Went the other direction. Right. So yes, that does make now three fouls on Martin. She is out of the game. And Kansas State has this ball now out of bounds underneath. With a two-point lead, that's the really the only foul trouble for Iowa to speak of is Martin with three fouls. King State has a couple of foul trouble players. Sundell misses the shot inside, wanted some contact, did not get it. Or maybe perhaps anticipating contact, missed it too long. King State's had two chances close to the rim in this third quarter and have missed both. Clark against Sundell, spinning, shooting, scoring! And that's vintage Caitlin Clark right there, just able to establish and control the possession from the get-go. Hawkeye fans will not like this with the player that she reminds me of, at least in this game, is Ashley Jones. Very much of Iowa State. <laughs> that's not going to make Hawkeye fans or Cyclone fans very happy. No, probably not. Either way. Three-pointer by Glenn will not go down. K-State's had a few chances to build on this narrow lead in the third, but have not been able to do it. And now it's a tie game, and Iowa a chance to get the lead back. They've led by as many as 12. Stokey thought about it for a moment. Here's Clark, stutter step, explodes through a double team and scores. And that's what happens is that patience. And when you move without the basketball and make the reads, now all of a sudden the defense gets stuck. Kansas State one-on-one, -on -one, no help side. Clark's got a wide open lane. Sundell unable to get the ball inside. A lot of contact, no whistle. And a steal by Glenn. Sundell still down there, able to lay it in. And that's the length we've been looking for. It. Where's these Glenn twins? They've got to be more aggressive. Use that length, use their athleticism out front. And Glenn picks up another steal. Stolke's going to let go of three and hit. The freshman from Cedar Rapids, her first of her career. 15 minutes a game in the first three games so far for Lisa Bluter, the Iowa Gatorade Player of the Year. She was a top 50 recruit coming into Iowa City. A lot of talent and upside. Ripped by Gregory results in a foul by a falter. And sent us to a timeout. When we come back, the sophomore class of Kent State taking on a new leadership role. A long way to go and wants to be better. Sundell will inbound the ball. King State down three. It's has been a back and forth affair here in the third corner. And really, since the midway point of the first corner on, it has been even between the fourth-ranked Hawkeyes and the Wildcats. 
We talk about youngsters for this Kansas State team having to take on big roles, and this is really kind of the battle of two different looks where you've got an incredibly veteran team in the Iowa Hawkeyes and young up-and-comers in this Kansas State team. And they come with different experiences. This is a Hawkeye team, they don't get rattled. Much does not disturb them. They understand playing in front of big crowds, going on the road. I asked Lisa Bluter about her non-conference schedule, what the premise of it is. She says they know they've got to take care of their business now or it makes things so much more difficult come March. But they look at their non-con as a way to prepare themselves for the remainder of their season. Catch and shoot for Clark. Again, just cannot find the range tonight. She has made it up by getting to the free throw line. Her teammates have carried her to this point. Sundell in the lane. Tough shot. Couldn't get the finish. Clark the other way. Finishes on the right side. Slice and dice, and you've got to have some help side. Somebody's got to be able to come over and help. When that high ball screen comes, you've either got to jump out and hedge, or you've got to be on the backside. Gregory. Shamasi will just take the three, and Stolke clears the board. Stolke, the biggest shot of the moment, a three-pointer after being left wide open. How about that pass from Clark to Warlock? Secondary break looks and a bit of a transition piece, and we haven't seen a lot of it from the Hawkeyes. But when it comes in spurts, that's when they make you pay. And Kansas State just caught flat-footed. Glenn not ready to cover Warnock, and you've got to be aware. That's what Clark does so well. She will pull the defense and make you commit. And once you commit, that's where they've got you. And this Iowa team just instantaneously adds a couple quick buckets and extends this lead, 63-56. 19-9-6 for Clark came in with six career triple doubles. This is a team, we know this is high octane offense, and this is probably much lower than this Iowa team has really been for the beginning of this season. They put 115 points on Evansville, they put 92 points on Drake in an overtime win at Drake, another one of those inter-Iowa matchups where you can kind of throw everything out. It was a sellout at the Knapp Center for the Drake Bulldogs. They couldn't pull the upset. But when you put 115 and 92 your last two games, this 62 seems like they're kind of maybe kind of playing in mud. So give credit to this Wildcat defense because they have forced them to make it not as easy to get up and go. But when Iowa does, they'll make you pay. Well, King State has at least accomplished one goal for Jeff Mitty. That's getting to the free throw line here in the third quarter. Yes. Gregory working in the post draws the foul against Warnock. And now no matter what, let alone shooting foul or on the floor, everything is two shots going from here on out for the next 2-11 in this third. And this could be a big lift for Kansas State. Keeps this thing within reach. Gregory hits both, has 14 points. Three cats in double figures. Clark, forced to go left, goes back to her right. Sundell blocks her! Oh my, what a play by Sundell! Gregory in transition, a pull-up three, not there, but Glenn the board. Sundell pock, pickpocketed by Davis. Clark in transition. Ball knocked away again. Picked up by Glenn of K-State. And both Clark and Sundell a little late getting up the court. Glenn was trying to go to her sister. The ball knocked away and the pace is suddenly picked up. And Lisa Bluter telling her team, if it is not there, don't try to force it. Glenn left wide open. Long on the three. K-State, two of eight from behind the arc in this quarter, nine of 30 in the ballgame. Iowa not much better, five of 18. Foul away from the ball, and that is gonna be on Briley Glenn. And that comes from Stolke just being aggressive and looking to create space. Fourth foul on Briley Glenn. But it's going to be Caitlin Clark, and that was really because of the movement without the basketball by Stolke, and there was a lot of congestion. And so a foul away from the basketball, but now Clark's going to be at the free throw line. For the 11th and 12th time today. And Clark misses. 
It has been a not typical performance shooting the ball for Kenton Clark. But still, 20 points for the fourth straight game. Just finds a way. She'll get a breather. And Gabby Marshall coming into the game, and this is going to also be a matchup here. Now, the last time Clark went to the bench, King State made a pretty good run. Yes. Key factor here now for Kansas State, you've got to exploit some of these matchups. Find the open players, pull those post players. Shabatsu with another three-pointer. Her fifth of the game, tying her career high. And a reaching foul by Jalen Glenn up high. Needlessly will send Iowa to the free throw line. And that's what I think the look on Jeff Mitty's face right now says it all. Is that you cannot have those fouls. Reaching fouls, touch fouls, 30, 40 feet away from the basket. This Kansas State team does not have the ability or the depth to be able to manage foul trouble like this. And now you're going to be able to play throughout this entire fourth quarter, the last 10 minutes. you got to be aggressive, but you've just got to be smart. And you don't want to put Iowa at the free throw line. They have made you pay all night long. Yep. Davis makes both. She's 4 of 4 from the line. 19 of 24 are the Hawkeyes at the stripe as you see the foul trouble for King State at the end of the third quarter. Trying to find the hot hand in Shimatsu. Gregory is posted up. Slams into Warnock. Draws the foul and gets to the line. Warnock with her second. That's where the best possessions have come for grabbing Gabby Gregory tonight is the isolations one on one down there on the low block. Good ball reversal. She posts up high, gets deep into the lane, but opens her shoulders to be able to be a target for the passer. And Serena Sundell finds her down low. Warnock just caught back behind too much contact, and she knocks down the first of two. You said it about Gregory's positioning. Textbook. Yeah, you just got to open yourself up. I was taught very early on by a wise man, probably sitting at home tonight, who's been minor watching this game. If you don't see their numbers on the front of their jersey, do not throw it. And Gabby Gregory gets herself posted up, sees those numbers from the guard. That's when you've got to deliver. Who knows how this game's going to end, but I think if you're Kansas State, you've got to be enthused with the way that this has gone. No Ioka Lee. Everyone thinking that King State will not be a power in the conference, and they are hanging with the number four team in the land. This is the highest AP ranking since 1994 for this Iowa Hawkeye program. We've said it time and time again, an incredibly veteran team. They've returned all five starters from last year. They've added big pieces like Molly Davis to their lineup. But if you can continue to hang around, you just want to make it a ball game. Give yourself a chance. Dollinger got a look at the end of the corner but couldn't hit it. It's a five-point lead for Iowa going to the fourth on Big 12 now. A little bit here in this last 10 minutes. What are going to be the lineups that can be most effective? You've got to continue to attack, but this has got to be about team defense. Now you're looking at a bit of a zone look by Kansas State. They don't want to allow Iowa just to slice and dice. If they can mix it up, move and switch on the screens, but kind of a bit of a box and one sagging defense as well on Clark. Ebert in the game gets the assignment on Clark, and Ebert gets the rebound off the miss. An update from K State's huddle during that last quarter break here in a moment from Jasmine Halliburton. Ryan Smolder, Missy Heidrich with you. Our entire crew from Bramwich Coliseum tonight on Big 12 now on ESPN Plus. Second game of a doubleheader tonight here at Bramwich Coliseum. Gregory, a guarded three off the left iron. And the rebound of Warnock. All right, Jasmine, what'd you hear from Jeff Mitty in that last timeout? Well, Coach Mitty was very adamant about getting stops without fouling, and he wants them to try to get more blocks and leaving their feet in order to make these shots more difficult for Iowa. He's not shot the ball well from behind the arc, but fouls have been an issue for King State. They have not been able to keep from fouling and putting Iowa at the line. Sonato left open, hits the long jumper. And that's the penetration that draws the double team. Someone's going to be open, but so many weapons and options on the floor for this Iowa offense. Sonano with that 15-foot jumper range. She will knock it down at one of the highest percentages in the country. Sundell, the 20 points for the first time this season, fifth time in her career. You 
like to see that attack mentality. She's got to continue to get downhill. Go at this Iowa defense. Don't allow yourself to become just a three-point shooting team. Clark, going to be stripped of the ball. One of the foul. Lisa Bluter in the ear of the near side official. Glenn trying to frustrate Warlock into the lane, and a foul comes on Jalen Glenn. That'll be her third. There's a lot of bumping, and there's a lot of pushing and shoving once you get in the middle of that lane. But you can see this Kansas State defense now has had to go one-on-one. -on -one. You're going to have to keep them out of the middle of the lane, force a baseline where you can get a little bit of help. But that time, Glenn got beat to the middle. Warnock just continued to go at her. Draws that foul, reset out of bounds, 20 on the shot clock. Clark driving, fouled. It's going to be on Everett with the body. Her first. And Clark will get to the free throw line. Off the handoff from Martin up top, and there's Clark. She's just able to get deep. And there's a lot of contact there when she picks up the basketball. It's a push from below. The foul may have could have gone against Sundell. I think that was maybe more the contact than against Emily Ebert. But either way, Caitlin Clark's getting to the free throw line. This is what her game brings to the floor. Penetration, distributes, and makes you pay and when you get beat. Well, on a night, a lesson to young players. On a night when you don't shoot the ball well, get to the free throw line. Yeah. Caitlin Clark, 11 of 14 from the strike. There is always a way for a player to impact a game. And we see Caitlin Clark do that time and time again. No matter where they play and who they play, Triple-double type numbers almost each and every night. Might not be from behind the three-point line, but she's finding a way to make it happen. Everts off the curl. From nearby Frankfort, Kansas, about 35, 40 minutes northeast of Manhattan. Double-team in the corner. Warnock was trying to get it back to Sonano. Now the lob. Sonano beats Shabatsing and scores. A great play by Marshall. Kept that dribble alive. Got it out of the corner and waited. Sonano, she reestablished herself twice. Gets that lob and finish. We're at a point here where Kansas State, you feel like, needs a bucket to try and keep themselves in the conversation. Ebert, drive to the hoop, stripped of the ball. It'll stay with the Wildcats. Empty possessions. That's what you really can't have right now with your Kansas State. You've got to make each and every one of these. Something's got to come out of it. You've got to get a bucket. You've got to get to the free throw line. Even draw a foul and a reset out of bounds. Wildcats have not had too many empty possessions. Gregory trying to force up a three does not hit. Gabby Gregory still has not hit a three here tonight. She has made her impact in this game offensively by going in the post and a lot of isolation looks, but has not found that rhythm from behind the three-point line. Credit somewhat to Iowa. They have made it difficult for her. Not many clean looks. The lob over the top to Sonano is off of her hands out of bounds. Had her on the last possession, looking for the same ISO, just got a little bit too deep. Not a great pass, an entry pass for Martin, but Sonano couldn't handle it. These are the ones now where K-State's got to capitalize. Well, Sonano closing in on 1,850 career points in Iowa. Sundell's three off the mark. Greg with the offensive rebound. Puts it up and in on a spin move. I like that no call right there by the official. It was a great offensive rebound by Gabby Gregory. Martin tried to draw the contact, maybe get a charge. Clark. Making another contact foul happen and get to the line. One on one isolation. They really like to clear the floor and give Clark an opportunity to be able to get to the rim one on one. We look at this great offensive rebound here by Gabby Gregory. Yeah, Martin goes down. There was contact there, but that is not going to be enough to draw that offensive charge. And a big board to keep it alive. That toughness and grit that Gabby Gregory has brought to the floor for Kansas State. Got to have answers each and every time now as this game goes under six minutes. Wildcat fans are not happy seeing the replay on the board of the call against Ebert. Clark buries two more free throws, has 24. 13 of 16 at the free throw line is Caitlin Clark. 24, 9, and 6 for Clark. And the lead 
is seven. Sundell, a fake underneath, gets the foul, missed the shot, heads to the line. Got loose on a back door. I don't think it was really an intentional back door. But a little confusion by the Hawkeyes defensively. And Shamasi able to find her there. She gets loose and then draws the foul. Now she's at the free throw line. As we said, there's got to be an answer each and every time. This is the answer for Kansas State. Solid possession. You make something happen out of a bit of a broken play, and Sundell's at the line. Kind of an unconventional point guard is Serena Sundell. Came in from Maryville, Missouri. But here we are seeing on a national stage, perhaps, with more eyeballs on it tonight with the importance of Clark. Yep. Sundell shining a little bit. You know about Rory Harmon and the year that she's had? Different point guard in Sundell. Your thoughts of where she ranks in the in the pantheon of point guards here in the Big 12 this year? Well, when you look at the five that were on the All Big Ten or All Big 12 freshman team a year ago, Lori Harmon, Serena Sundell, Kelby Washington at Oklahoma, all with that point guard mentality and really the engines that make their offense go. Each as their games have grown into their sophomore season, becoming more scorers and as well as distributors. And we're seeing that here tonight from Sundell, that attack mentality. She's got to continue with that, even not necessarily on a big stage like tonight. Gregory draws another foul in the paint. This one on a falter, her third. Iowa arguing for Paul, in case the fans don't like that. And a falter is a good matchup for Lisa Bluter, trying to contain Gabby Gregory. Agreed. At 5'11", she's got some size and some strength down there, just trying to keep her isolated. But when Gregory can establish herself and get posted, that's where she's had that success tonight. Hasn't been from behind the three-point line, it's been in the post. Yep, and getting to the free throw line where she's 6 of 6. It's not quite the level of Caitlin Clark, but it has helped. Sundell, off the screen, to the basket. We just said a minute ago, that attack mentality, become a scorer, assert yourself even more. She did it as a freshman, but her game continues to evolve, and Serena Sundell, with a lot of eyes and a lot of spotlight against the number four team in the country, making a name for herself here tonight so far with a big opportunity for a three-point play to tie her career high. Couldn't get it. The rebound, Sundell! A chance to tie her, get within one. Sundell to tie the game. Not there, and Iowa Stolke the rebound, fouled from behind by Shamatsi, and that's her fourth. And this is where Kansas State can't afford those touch fouls. You can't have the little ones here or there. You've got to make them pay, play clean the rest of the way. We'll be back to Bramblage. Players to come in and make plays at a big time in a preseason All Big 12 selection. Sophomore Serena Sandell has done it on both ends tonight. Defensive plays and that attack mentality to look to score. The sophomore's been the point guard she can distribute, but tonight 24 points so far, 9 of 19 from the field. She's 5 of 7 from the free throw line. Five assists, six boards. She's done a little bit of everything to keep this game within reach. Kansas State down just three, under five to go. Jasmine Halliburton with more from what King State talked about that last time out. Hey guys, so the theme in that huddle was leave it out there all on the floor. And Gabby Gregory was talking about no fouls and now we are good, we are good. And they're just trying to keep this energy loose right now with five minutes left. Sonano in the lane going against Lauterbach. Shot rejected. A tie up for the ball. Arrow to King State. Ebert, who has been dealing with injuries in, the, in this preseason. Hold your breath, but what a big play by the junior Lauterbach. Yeah, it just stays vertical. There's no contact. That's what you have to do in the post. If those arms come down and you create the body contact, that's where the whistle will come in. A clean block, a jump ball, and Kansas State keeps the possession. Lauterbach, who has range, misses the shot. Ambitious there for the junior. And Iowa the other way with Clark. Drop off for Sonano. And that possession and the speed and pace. We haven't seen a lot of the transition game from the Hawkeyes here in the second half, but they made a count when they needed it. Stolke lost her shoe. Defending here against Ebert. 
Everett to the basket. Couldn't hit it. And the rebound to Iowa. And a pause for a moment here with Spokey. Return to the game, Morgan State. Crazy to see that play happen. And then she ends up going one on one and having to play defense. Gets the miss. Big block out that time by the Hawkeyes. And Iowa now, this is a big possession for both teams here as we go under that four minute mark. State trying to stay within two possessions. Iowa trying to blow the lead up. Warnock. Law for Sanando, all not on the same page. Stolke stepping through a double team and a timeout from Lisa Bluter. Yeah, I like that timeout right there. A veteran play. Coach knew that her player was in trouble. They were stopping. You bail it out, and now you'll have 12 on that shot clock. But this Iowa team, their message and the mentality of what this offense is built around, we've talked about it all night. It's about tempo, it's about reads, it's about cuts, making the next pass. But one thing that this coaching staff increases is that they will pass up a good shot for a great shot. They're gonna celebrate the assist. So you know when that penetration comes in the middle of the lane, if it's not a wide open look for Warnock, she's looking to dump. And that's exactly where she was. She didn't have an open build, but right now this Iowa team trying to build on this momentum and keep these possessions alive. Quick turnaround for the Wildcats on the women's side is tomorrow night. They will take on the Vaqueros of UT Rio Grande Valley here at 6.30. Kind of an interesting schedule, schedule quirk to get this game with Iowa on the books. Jeff Biddy's team has been competitive. They brought an Oregon in here last season and then the year before that was UConn. The state has made it a point to bring in a top flight opponent each year in the non-conference, Iowa this year. It's been the message the Big 12 has said. You've got to continue to beef up your scheduling. Everybody's got to do their part, but this also positions teams better with their net rankings and how they look at their non-con schedules as it comes to tournament time. Stolke called for over the back her second. That's the fourth foul on Iowa. So now each team with 14 fouls, free throws for everybody the rest of the way on a whistle. Break for a while there for Gregory. Ebert leaves, Gregory returns. King State another chance to pull within a possession. Wildcats have not hit a three here in the fourth quarter. A foul, a six three. The Hawkeyes have not made the adjustment. She has stepped out and that has been a struggle so far this season for Iowa guarding posts that move outside the lane. Gregory with a near steal. Davis kept it somehow, so way. Now Glenn steals all the way to the other end. Touchdown again. You've got to anticipate Iowa with a miscue and a bad possession offensively. Kansas State makes a pay. And the crowd into it now. Fourth ranked Iowa on the road in Manhattan, tied in the fourth. Clark, step back three. Got it! <laughs> Her coach knew the minute it left her hand that that was going in, and that's what Caitlin Clark does. She will answer every time. Just the second three ball made by Clark in the game on a tough shooting night. What an answer by the Old American. Shock clock under 10 and a timeout for Jeff Biddy. Offense seemed a bit bogged down. If anything, the Wildcats seemed a bit shell-shocked from Clark hitting that big shot. Well, you come up with the play that you need defensively two possessions prior to that, and then you get a big steal, and you've got Glenn, and she makes a pay. Now it's tied. And just to be able to put this team on her back, she's been doing it since the minute she arrived in Iowa City, but Caitlin Clark coming up with a big-time three. That step back, she uses it. We've seen highlights, everyone has, Sports Center, wherever it is, where she'll step back and she might be close to half court. That right there, one of the most high percentage shots that young lady will take all season long. 27 points, second highest point mark of Clark this season. She has yet another double double. Her 28th of the se of her career, second of the year, and three assists away from a triple double. Gregory, driving on Warnock, gets the foul and gets to the line. 
Hancock approached a little bit late, and it was a great decision by Gregory just to go right by her. She came out tall, just went right by her, and that contact comes not only on the initial move, but with the body. And a chance for Gabby Gregory here to kind of put a little bit more confidence back in this Kansas State team. As you said, you kind of get a little bit shell-shocked. A big three by Clark stops the bleeding, puts them back in the lead. But this is how you continue to stay in the game. Build that confidence. Do not allow Iowa to get comfortable. 20 points for Gabby Gregory. And K-State, who averages 80 a game, went on their average. The ball finds the hands of Clark. Who else? Riley Glenn playing with four fouls is now on Clark. Davis running the point. Shot clock under 10, under two minutes to go. Davis left wide open. Missed it, but gets her own rebound and a reset for the fourth ranked Hawkeyes up one. And these are big possessions right here. This is a veteran squad. They understand. Use the clock, use the possession to your advantage. Davis winding it down again. Wants to go to her right. Hedge on the screen by Shalazzi. Davis in some trouble. Stokey in and foul. It's stolen by Sundell. What a night for Sundell. She was battling. There had been a mismatch and a screen. They had switched. She had Sonano inside. Heads up play right there by the sophomore. Gregory hit to the ground again underneath. Warlock commits the foul. It's her fourth. And Gregory going to the line. You're going to see Gabby Gregory just continue to battle for that position. The isolation in the post has been the answer for the Wildcats tonight. She hasn't found that range from three-point line, but to be able to get to the free throw line, one-on-one -on -one isolations, three-point chain play opportunities, this is where Gregory has had her success, and they got to just continue to go back to the well time and time again. And now this thing is tied back up, 81 all. Gregory with 21, coming off a 25-point game, nine boards against Wisconsin. And she was Big Tail Player of the Week for the first time in her career, and she gives K-State the lead. Clark with 50 dribbling in the lane, tied up. Iowa gets the ball. Possession stays here. Now you've got 105. And again, this is not an Iowa team at all. You don't see a lot of panic out of this squad. No panic on the bench, no panic on the floor. Big possession here defensively for the Cats. Students into it on the far side for K-State. A minute to go. Martin. Looking for Gregory to post up. Now to Sonano. Way up good. Outstanding entry and way to see the defense. You've got to allow that front to come. And Sonano makes him pay. So Iowa takes the lead back and quiets the roar for a moment. Gregory working right side of the lane. Steps around Davis. Cut it the shot and gets to the free throw line. Again for Gregory. Time and time again, one on one, whether it's been Sundell or Gregory, able to put it on the floor and then find a way to finish. Now this shot doesn't go in, but the finish is her chance at the free throw line where Gabby Gregory has been lights out tonight. She is 10 of 10. And she'll miss. That would announcer be Jinx. Announcer Jinx. That I, I, yep, I, I own that one, everybody. I own it. I own it. She makes the second to tie the game. Does this ball ever leave the hands of 22? Not if you can help it. That's how I look at it. Lisa Bluter's still got one timeout left. She can use it if she needs it, but she's going to let her use this shot clock and go one on one. Clark eyeing the clock. Wants to post up. They're going to run the same play to get Sonano isolated. And a jump ball is Glenn tied up with the Hawkeye in front of the Hawkeye bench. It was Clark trying to sell a foul. And you called it. They were looking for that same isolation play that they had on the last possession. They had Sonano there, 
but it was late because of a lot of contact and a lot of traffic that did not necessarily allow Caitlin Clark to be able to get up there to set that screen. Now Jeff Mitty takes his time out, which will then advance the basketball to the hash mark in the front court. Over by the K-State bench, and it'll be a chance for the Wildcats to win the game. Yep, 8.5 here on the game clock. Shot clock is off. Both what do you teams think? can make they can make any kind of substitution that they want here, and it's a full timeout. All right, let's go to the play that K-State K-State's going to go to. The last two possessions, it's been Gregory driving, backing down her man, getting to the free throw line. Do you go the same way, Sundell? First option. I think the first option. Number one, I'm going to look to see who's going to throw this basketball in because it could be a quick hit. Bat to the inbounder. If it's Adele or Gregory that throws it in, look for them to get it back quickly coming back in bounds. Second of all, I'm looking for some screens and some isolation. However, whatever screen you set, you've got to be set. Do not give the official an opportunity. On a cross screen, a high ball screen, whatever it is, do not give them a chance to call you on a moving screen to player control. I would like the ball in, in the hands right now. I think Serena Sundell is your best option if you're Jeff Mitty. Allow her to create. If she draws a double, a triple team, she gets in trouble. Somebody's got to relocate. you got to make yourself available. If not, this thing goes to overtime, and you've put yourself in a really good position. Could it be the second straight overtime game in less than a week for Iowa? Or does King State pull off the upset? Timeout by Jeff Biddy as it was during the five count. King State burns their final timeout. And Emily Everett, the inbound passer there. So they were looking for a down screen, bringing Briley Glenn up. It really wasn't an isolation on the post for anything. They want that ball inbounded out away from the basket where they can take somebody one on one. It was not necessarily an isolation in the post for a quick hit. Last year, the Wildcats knocked off a top 10 team in 10th ranked Baylor. This would be the highest upset team if they could pull it off and, and the, take it down number four. Yeah, the highest AP ranking for this Iowa Hawkeye program since 1994. And you said it, they are coming off a 92-86 overtime win at Drake over the weekend. Looking to get to 4-0. The ball goes to Gregory. Driving through the lane, falls to the ground, and a foul is called. With 4.7 seconds left. Well, now you've got opportunity here, and that's going to be Gabby Gregory at the free throw line. And this is a bit of a late call here. May have been a no call. Martin's falling down. Everybody's down. She loses con loses control of the basketball. I'll tell you what that is, Missy. What do you think of this? Martin goes down. It is a no call on the initial contact, but we saw in the rules video we saw this year, if the player flops to the ground or it's a no call, but trips up the offensive player, it that's can result in a that's foul. That's true. That is in the list. I mean, that's on. It's on. That is part of the point of emphasis from officials. So you're right. I think because she disrupted her line of play, the hardest part about that possession right there is whether or not Gabby Gregory actually had possession of the basketball. So Gregory to the free throw line. That's a great point. Was Gregory still in possession of the ball? It doesn't matter now. She's at the line with two free throws with 4.7 left. That's the first. He's made in front. Now, this game is far from over yes. with 22 on the court. And you're also going to see if this goes in. Neither way, Lisa Bluter's going to call timeout so they can advance the basketball. Missed the second, and there's the timeout with 3.8 left. So K-State's got the lead by one. And a huge rebound right there by the freshman. Stolke goes up to get that defensive board. They call timeout. And this Iowa team now, they will be able to, they will be able to advance the basketball. They've got a full timeout. They're going to set up their play down one. Monica Sinano has checked back in. So you've got multiple weapons on the floor for the Hawkeyes. Whether you're looking for a quick hit and a screen, somebody in the post for Sinano, and or number one option for anybody in the nation would be number 22, Caitlin Clark. The hard part about this now is that you can't foul. No. And, and it's so hard yes. to try and deny Clark the ball and avoid fouling to put her at the line because Clark tonight, 
at the free throw line, 13 of 16, and a chance potentially to win the game should King State foul on the inbound. Yeah, you've got to be able to play clean, and that's one of the things that has plagued this team this, in this ball game is giving this Iowa team chances at the free throw line. The Hawkeyes 23 of 28 from the line. Kansas State has inched back up 17 of 21 themselves. But as you said it, this has got to be a clean defensive possession for Kansas State right here. Do not give the officials any reason to blow that whistle. Final play of regulation. A near steal by K-State. Clark to the ground. Ward up the center. Is there a foul call? Yes! K-State with a foul on Sonato as she went up for the final shot. Clark goes down near midcourt. Chaos as K-State thought the game was over. Gregory injured as well. And Sonato headed to the free throw line. Caitlin Clark gets tripped up here. She loses the basketball and sprains. It looks like an ankle. The whistle goes. Clark... Whether that was Gabby Gregory, now the question is going to be whether or not... The play is under review to see if the foul occurred before triple zeros. There you go. That's going to be the question here. It was the pass, and it seems as though That's the not, light is on. The light doesn't before, matter. That's true. It's got to go to triple zeros. It's not the light. So that's going to be the number one question here. The ball went to the middle of the floor, and Caitlin Clark... Well, struggling you just, right there. You, you hate hope, to see that. Yep. Hopefully that is not something major for one of those true superstars in the game. Yep. And especially as time winding down, trying to make a play, came across that screen, kept the possession alive for the Hawkeyes. And this now just becomes complete judgment call here with the officials of whether or not that goes to double zero. Now they'll run the clock here and see. Oh boy, that is so close. When does the contact occur by Gregory? Yeah, it becomes a judgment call by this officiating crew. And they can stop it, look at different angles yep. to see. And they've got different looks that they have here, for sure. If Sonano goes to the line, to shoot two to try and win the game. She is two of four from the line tonight and a 65% shooter this season. So it's not an automatic nope. that she's gonna hit two, but. They're not gonna get the foul. King State has won. What a finish. A huge finish and a gutsy win by Kansas State. They stayed in this thing, Brian, from the get-go. They answered really every punch that Iowa was able to put out. And on a night where we didn't necessarily see fantastic shooting from the perimeter, it was a battle of wills in the post, whether it was guards or penetration, trying to make plays one way or the other. And we see Caitlin Clark, she finishes this game tonight, 27 points, 13 of 16, 10 rebounds. But sprains her ankle on that last possession, and hopefully not a blow at all, but this will be a big blow to this Iowa team and a huge confidence lift and a big, big win for Kansas State. Let's go to Jasmine Halliburton, who's with Jeff Mitty. Coach, you just knocked off the number four team in the country. How do you feel tonight? <laughs> well, you, you guys, everybody saw a hell of a game. Uh, this was back and forth, back and forth. Really proud of our group. Uh, made a lot of plays. Gabby Gregory kind of willed us there at the end, but uh, great game by both teams. And Serena Sundell, she has a season high already with 24 points. What did you think of her performance throughout the entire game tonight? Serena was uh, amazing in the middle part of that second half and really played great and made some great defensive plays down there. So we, it was a team effort for sure. I think this is the highest ranked team that K-State has been able to knock off in their history. What did you think of just this overall team tonight, especially defensively? Well, I mean, I, I think this. These are special wins. 
Um, we'll get to enjoy this for about two hours. We play tomorrow, so we'll have to come down off this. But uh, super proud of our group and uh, great game. All right, thank you, Coach. Congratulations. Thank you, Jasmine. Appreciate that. And while Sundell certainly gets a nod, we'll talk about her in a moment. How about Gabby Gregory tonight? She was fantastic. She didn't necessarily have to score the basketball from the three-point line and didn't hit one at all tonight. But 6 of 14 from the floor, 12 of 14 from the free throw line. And that toughness and that grit and her ability to find a way to put the ball in the basket when Kansas State needed it the most. That's what you need out of veteran leadership. A player that has been there before, willing to make the play and get dirty and make it happen. Gabby Gregory did it tonight in Kansas State with a huge upset that will turn a lot of heads all across women's basketball tonight. And shockwaves for the Big 12 in a race that was considered to be wide open in the league already with Iowa State, Texas, Baby Baylor in the mix. You don't know who would be there. K-State without Aoka Lee. Not much was thought about this team. They were kind of picked middle of the pack. You're kind of thinking, ah, we'll see. As you said, the race suddenly becomes much different if this is K-State moving forward. Well, and this kind of confidence is what this team needs. We said it at the top, young group, a veteran team from Iowa, not much gets them rattled. But when you can put numbers on the board and just continue to chip away, that's what you have to do. Look at that, th the second to last one on that stat sheet, Brian. 22 points off turnovers. This Iowa team, they take care of the basketball. They only turned it over 13 times tonight, but the Cats get 22 points. That's one of the biggest difference makers in turning the table and keeping it close within striking range when they needed it the most.